When we build an image classification model using Vertex AI, uh, the first thing we're going to need to do is start thinking about the data. So we're going to go to data sets, and I don't have any data sets configured here, so I'm going to create one, and I'm going to create a data set called Lizards and Dogs. And this is going to be a useful model because my wife uh, is, is pretty dog friendly, probably not super happy about lizards in the house. So if my kids need to identify if a pet is okay, this could be a useful model for them to use. Uh, now we have different different options for the models we build here using these you know, sort of off the shelf uh, automatic model training, uh, you know, au automatic model training services. One of them is image classification, which we're going to take a look at, but you can also classify images with multiple labels. Uh, you can detect objects, in fact, even segment objects in your images. You also have the option for tabular data to create a regression classification model or a forecasting model. You can build different models with text such as classification or even uh, analyze the sentiment in text. And in video you can uh, detect actions, you can uh, identify objects, you can even uh, classify your videos. So there's a lot of different options there. But we're going to select image classification and I'm going to hit create. This is going to take just a moment to create the data set. Now I'm going to have to upload some images. Anytime we're dealing with machine learning we're probably going to have to work with data. And we can we we can start by you know just selecting some files. So I already have a bunch of dog images selected uh, and downloaded, and I've put those all in a folder. So this way I can I can very easily label them by just uploading them all at once. And we're going to store those in cloud storage. That's automatically set up uh, based on a cloud storage bucket I already have. And we're going to go ahead and create. This is going to take a minute. It takes a, a moment for all of this data to be uploaded and all of this import to happen. Um, so hopefully within a few minutes we'll have uh, access to these images and we can get into the labeling process. Once all of our data is uploaded we can actually label it very quickly. All we have to do is add a new label and from there we can select all of these. Uh, we only have 10 selected so if we actually select more than that we can say 50. Now we can click select all. We can assign labels and we're going to say these are all dogs. So we save those. Now we have a bunch of labeled dogs. Now if we go back to our import tab we can now upload the rest of our images. So we'll go one folder up and we'll say lizards and we'll grab all of our lizards and then we'll upload all of our lizards which again will probably take somewhere in the ballpark of uh, one to five minutes so you know it's a good chance to kind of walk away and, and try to do something else for a moment. Now that we've uploaded all of those additional images, we can add a new label. So we'll call this label lizard. And now we can select all of our unlabeled images. We can select all. Uh, probably want to select more than 10. So let's, let's try that again. Uh, we, we can select all. We're going to assign a lizard label to all of those. So now we have 40 images. They are all uh, they are all labeled. So we have a uh, you know, good bit of images here. So let's go ahead and we'll train a new model. We have enough items here. So uh, we'll take the defaults. We'll use AutoML. Uh, we don't need to do custom training. We're not going to deploy this to an edge model. This is really useful if you have like a, a tensor uh, processing unit board or you know something that you can use to kind of deploy for you know actual on the spot uh, purposes. So this is something that could be useful if you have like a, a factory application or something where you just want to have uh, the model uh, uh, model working on a device. So let's continue. We'll call this uh, model. It's fine. Lizards and dogs, and uh, we can the advanced options. Uh, this is probably worth taking a look at because we want to see. You know, we have a split. So when we're dealing with training a machine learning model, it's important to recognize that we have a we want to have a, a certain percent for training. We want to validate our data, and then we have some uh, test sets so that we can identify that you know this is actually working properly. So having this this data split, you know, into a training set, a validation set. And, and maybe a holdout set uh, allows us to train uh, on some of the data and then make sure that we're actually processing effectively. Now this can this is randomly split and oftentimes what a model uh, does is you can train it a couple of different ways on different splits of the data to see how it performs. Uh, so you know this is all handled automatically. Um, 
we uh, we don't need to use incremental training. We, that, that's uh, not necessary right now. Uh, and we will continue. Uh, we can uh, we don't need explainable AI, but this is really nice if we want to have some understanding of why the decisions are made. Uh, and we'll say a minimum of eight hours with early stopping. So let's go ahead and we'll click start training, and then a label or a model is gonna gonna start training there. And uh, we can actually see that if we go over to training on the left. Uh, menu we can see the status of that and you can see that's pending now it can take a little bit of time so we'll, we'll hold here until that one's actually trained you can see here that after an hour 19 minutes uh, we actually do have a trained model so that should be all set we should be oh actually two hours 18 minutes we have a trained model and that's finished and uh, there we go this should be good to look at so let's take a look at our model here can find some details and this is going to show us a couple of our options here uh, as far as or a couple of our outcomes um, you know we didn't have that much data here so the confusion matrix is going to show us uh, just probably just two tests for each one of these so we can see that a, a lizard uh, was identified as a littered, lizard 100 percent of the time but when we or, when we predicted lizard, one of our images came in as a dog, and we can see dog was predicted uh, appropriately 50% of the time. And then we also can see the precision and recall here, and we can see how those vary based on how we adjust the confidence uh, threshold. Um, so your, your precision is how often we're, we're guessing correctly, and your recall is, is how often we're, we're kind of getting accuracy across our true positives and our false negatives. So this, this is probably not the greatest model, and there's a couple of reasons for this one is there's just not that much data here you know and two is I wasn't terribly careful in trying to select the best possible images so for the ones that we have yeah, this is you know it might fare better in practice so in order to test this we can just put this to an end or put this on an endpoint so we click deploy and test and we'll click deploy to an endpoint and uh, we you know we'll say uh, model I'll say lizard dog model hosting and the reason why we use an endpoint is, you know, this allows us to have some scaling. It allows us to uh, serve the model and focus uh, on fo on serving the model effectively. So we can do things like we can split traffic. Uh, right now, we only need one compute node because we're just going to test this. Uh, so you know, we can see we have logging, so we can see what happens as that uh, that that uh, model or as this model services requests. So if we click deploy, now we're going to go ahead and create this, and this is going to take a few minutes. It, it probably won't take nearly as long as it took to train the model uh, but you can see this is going to take a little bit of time to actually deploy to an endpoint so we can test we have our endpoint now and we've deployed our model there so now we can click upload image and we can test it so uh, i'm going to give it an image here and we can see this is a dog so despite the fact that our model's performance on the images we saw uh, for testing wasn't great you know it looks like it's actually working pretty well for this image so let's try a second image and uh, we can see here identifying this as a lizard so that's good so we're actually doing pretty well on our predictions uh, if we take a look at this third image well, that's a dog and looks like the model predicted properly and uh, if we take a look at this fourth dog or fourth image that's a uh, that's a lizard so the model's performing a little bit better here than uh, than I think that the evaluation of the model or the initial evaluation sort of predicted so let's uh, let's take a look at this we'll, we'll look, go back and look at our, our model and uh, here you can see we can we can look at the confusion matrix we can also click on this and see some more information so it looks like for whatever reason it didn't identify this as a dog whereas it no uh, no false positives but we did have a true positive here and it identified this image as a dog where with lizards our test images it looked like those both uh, seemed like they were uh, identifying lizards so we've we maybe have a better model than those test images uh, indicated but it's hard to say we only worked with 20 images of each uh, label here so that's a limited amount of data we'd probably be able to improve this model if we had uh, actually uh, probably worked with with a bit more data or been more deliberate about choosing some representative and uh, some varied images so this will give us a pretty good indication of how we can build a model it's probably good to under deploy this once you uh, once you're done uh, so if we click on our endpoint um, we probably want to undeploy our model 
And uh, we also want to delete that endpoint just so that we're cleaning up our resources and we don't get charged for uh, anything that we're not using. So if I go to my endpoints now, I should see this one and I should be able to delete it just to make sure that uh, all of my resources are freed and I'm not being charged further. So hopefully that'll give you a good, uh, good overview of how you can train a model using Vertex AI uh, image classification. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to use some of this knowledge and some of the details here uh, as you progress through this course. Thank you for watching.